What's going on guys? My name is Saul with Southwest Irrigation DIY. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you guys how to do a complete rebuild kit or how to fix a sprinkler valve um, that is continuously running, that won't stop. The timer is set off, but the zone is still running. And so I'm gonna go ahead and explain what can cause that, um, how to fix it, and if it's something that you're definitely looking into, then definitely stick around and watch this video. Okay, so first and foremost, before watching this video, if you have, if you're like, if you need to shut off the water because the irrigation won't turn off, you're gonna need to go to your backflow preventer and turn that guy off. If you don't have a backflow preventer, or if you suspect that the backflow preventer, the ball handles are gonna pop off, and then you're gonna be stuck with whatever you've got. You're gonna have to go to your meter with a meter key and shut the water off there at the street. So you'll need to do first before any of this. So get that done. Okay, so what are some reasons why you would replace the valve anyways or do a rebuild kit? Well, when it comes to the valves, mechanically, there's two pieces that allow water to pass through the valve so that the irrigation kicks on. The first one is the solenoid. The second one is the diaphragm. Both of these work together to open and close the valve. Under normal circumstances, the valve is supposed to open and close with the diaphragm going up and down. And the solenoid is supposed to trigger that ability to do that through air pockets and whatnot. That's the mechanisms of the valve. So what ends up happening is whenever you have a continuous leak, one in the case where the sprinklers are on continuously 24 seven and they won't stop, that means that the valve that the diaphragm opened up and now there's something obstructing it from sitting down, whether it's an object or the diaphragm itself is warped and it won't sit down and it won't close all the way. That's what would cause the water to continuously run. The other thing would be if you have a continuous leak that you can't see, that the city notifies you let's say that you know you suspect that there's a leak you check out the meter the meter dial is spinning very very subtly you know you have an irrigation leak when that happens is the diaphragm itself has you know one of three things it either has a warp in it it's got a tear in it or something's blocking its way from sitting properly so water will pass through it at a subtle rate not enough to trigger the entire valve to go up but just enough water to push to open the diaphragm and let water pass through and so you have a continuous leak and that's what results in stagnant water at a sprinkler. And the other thing that could go bad, I said, was the solenoid. The solenoid too can also go bad. So what ends up happening is the solenoid sits on top of the valve and in the valve, the solenoid has a little plunger in it and it's supposed to pop, stop this little weep hole. What ends up happening is when the irrigation kicks on, when the timer is scheduled to kick it on, it sends electricity over to the solenoid and the solenoid will trigger a magnet when it gets that electricity. So what it'll do is it'll go up. And so now the valve opens up. That's how it does mechanically. That's exactly how the irrigation system works on with the timer. It's a plunger. It opens up that weep hole, which allows the diaphragm to go up. So when the electricity goes through it, it'll lift up the, the plunger. In some situations, the plunger can actually be stuck in this on position. And so the valve won't shut off. That weep hole needs to be covered in order for the diaphragm to sit down and close the valve. So that could be the solenoid too. The other thing could be that the solenoid itself, the weep hole is what allows the diaphragm to open up. So when the weep hole is not covered, it's when you have continuous leak. Depending on how, how much of the gap between the plunger and the weep hole is, will dictate how much water output will come out of the sprinklers. So if it's like this and the sprinklers continuously run, then that means that the plunger is stuck in the on position. Sometimes people can, and sometimes this happens automatically for whatever reason, the solenoid will unthread itself from the weep hole. And so when it's slightly turned, it'll let water pass through very subtly. Not enough to trigger the whole diaphragm to open up. Just enough for the diaphragm to barely open up. And so, so my recommendation is whenever you have a bad diaphragm or a bad solenoid, chances are that the diaphragm or solenoid that you're replacing is the same age as the diaphragm or solenoid that you're not replacing. So it's better to just opt for a whole rebuild kit instead of doing it one by one. Chances are if you do one, then immediately after, a month later or so, the next thing will go bad. So, and you save a little bit of money that way too. If you buy the parts individually, I think it comes out a little bit more expensive compared to if you just buy the whole unit and then you just offer a rebuild kit or what we call topping a valve. Simple question like that and those are answered I hope that helps answer why you would even consider replacing the diaphragm or solenoid or choosing to opt for a whole rebuild kit as opposed to just doing one at a time okay so how do you go about identifying which of the valves that you've got is the one that's the culprit that's leaking water continuously well if you have a single valve let's say you have a drip system that does a front yard and a backyard together then you don't really need any of this that I'm gonna talk about you can just quickly skip to the video where I start doing the rebuild kit but if you have let's say more than one valve and you can't identify which of these valves it's a little bit a little bit more difficult you're gonna need a special instrument just a regular good old stethoscope mechanics stethoscope that you can pick up at a Harbor Freight store or you could probably
probably find one on Amazon and I'll probably have a link to it uh, in the description. But essentially this guy right here will help you identify which of the valves is leaking. So of course the water to the irrigation system is currently off and you're gonna have to kick it on in order to identify which of these valves is leaking. So let me go ahead and show you what that process looks like. Okay, so in this particular valve box, we've got three zones. Two of these zones are drip systems and the other one's a sprinkler system. And I know that because the customer told me, but the other way I identify that is because down here you've got these two gray and white PSI reducers. And over here you got just straight pipe PVC. And so what that means is because irrigation systems that have a drip system, so plants and trees, they're going to need a PSI reducer because the pipes naturally can't handle more than 30 PSI. Whereas sprinkler systems, they just straight pipe it. So in order to begin, you're gonna to need to turn on the water back on again. And then from there, you should be able to see the sprinklers or the drip system kick on. Or you should suspect that there's a leak. Let's say that there's a continuous leak that's very small. You cannot see it, but you see water stagnate. And let's say that you don't. Let's say that the city notifies you, hey, you have a continuously considered checking the irrigation valve. So in this case, what you'll do is you'll grab this special tool, right? The stethoscope, you'll put it on. And what it does is it'll absorb in the sound and it'll resonate. And you can really, really pick this up really, really good with an instrument like this. And so what you'll do is you'll put the pin here and you'll attach it to the solenoid. You, you'll point it to the solenoid like this. If the valve itself is not leaking, then what you should hear is nothing, just nothingness, right? And you go on, you do that for all the valves. You typically want to point this to the solenoid. When you have a continuous leak, what you'll hear is you'll hear this noise. It'll be loud if you can visually see the sprinklers kick on. It'll sound something like... Let's say it's a continuous leak that the city notifies you and you can't pick up. Well, by doing this, you should hear something very, very like minuscule, but you will hear a sound. It'll sound something like. So with that in mind, it's just trying your best to identify which of these is kicking on. The whole purpose of using a thetoscope like this is to pick up some sort of sound, water passing through the valve when it's not supposed to be. So that's the goal. So once you've identified which of these valves is the one that's the culprit, that's leaking water, there are typically two things that can cause that. One is a solenoid. The other thing is gonna be the diaphragm. So in most cases, just replacing the solenoid or diaphragm will typically solve this problem of a continuous leak. But what I recommend you do is if one of them is bad, then consider just doing a full rebuild kit. And what that means is first and foremost, before all that, you're going to have to identify what kind of valves you've got, the manufacturer and the type of series that, the, that it is. And I'll probably link in the, in the description the various, the most common ones here in the Southwest at the very least. But once you've done that, in this situation, what they've got is a Hunter PGV with flow control valve. And so I'm going to match it by grabbing the exact same one. This is a Hunter PGV flow with flow control. Okay, so the rebuild process goes as follows. You'll want to take away the solenoid. So unthread this guy. There's four screws on here. You'll want to remove those screws. And typically, if you have a uh, impact driver like this, it makes it easier. Okay, once you've got all the screws, make sure that they're not on there. You want to take off the top piece like this. Okay. Set this aside if you want to save this guy, but if you're doing a full rebuild kit, then don't worry about it because the new one that we're going to put in will take over its place. So inside you got the spring in here and you got the diaphragm and then at the very bottom, depending on what type of valve it is, you might have a retainer like this. So the rebuild kit is as follows. You'll take your new valve, you'll take off the solenoid, you'll take off these screws, you'll take both the diaphragm, the spring and the retainer with you and you'll put this, all this stuff, the new parts, into the existing valve, just like this. Retainer first, then diaphragm. Put the spring there, and then you'll have the top piece that follows. So the way it works is there's arrows on all valves showing you the flow of water. You got the inlet side, and you got the outlet side. The outlet side will always be where the solenoid sits. So not to get this confused, but the valves only go in one way. But it helps so that you don't get this wrong because it, I've seen this happen with some valves, you can actually get this wrong. The valve, will, the top piece will sit on the bottom piece, on the bottom body, uh, no matter where, if you have it right or if you have it wrong. In this case, this Hunter PGV valve only goes in one way. But to make it simple so that you know the solenoid will always be where the outlet is. And there's an arrow going inlet, outlet. So you put that on there, put the new valve in. So we got a new retainer, we got a new diaphragm, new spring, and a whole new top piece. This is what we call 
topping a valve rebuild kit. So the process goes like this. And then lastly, solenoid. All you have to do now is just wire both of these, the new red leads of the, sol of the new solenoid to the existing red leads of the old solenoid. All you have to do is splice this and then time together with pigtails. I don't have any on me, but that's essentially what you'll do. Okay, so the water's back on. I'm gonna go ahead and use the death scope again to make sure that it's not on. Go ahead and listen in on the solenoid. Boom, no sound, it's all good to go. So one last thing we need to do before we finish this off is make sure that the wiring is correct and then we're gonna go to the timer and kick it on and make sure that it opens and closes perfectly fine without issue. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Everything turned out great. We essentially fixed the problem. We did a rebuild kit, a full rebuild kit, new solo, new diaphragm, new retainer, new spring, and a new top piece. And so with that in mind, um, we, we kicked it on. We made sure that the timer kicked it on perfectly fine, and then we made sure that the timer kicked it off perfectly fine. So mechanically, the valve is working perfectly fine. No issues there. So other than that, I hope this video was helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you appreciate, if you like the video, I would appreciate if you guys could just hit the like button. And if you, if you are new, if you would like to continue on uh, learning a little bit more, definitely consider hitting the, the subscribe button. So I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a good day.